Hello my kitties, how's it going? Melodica here with a brand new let's play uh, Well, actually a continuation of the little series I'm making without a voice It is a steam game and we are in day two So we're just gonna keep rolling at it, okay? Day two Okay Same routine There is a sort of melancholy Melancholy? One feels when closing a book for the final time Feeling its last words wash over you as you leave its world and return to your own life. I love reading. I love reading. Or I used to, anyways. It was an ennui that Cassidy had grown used to. In her former life, she had received the best education that money and bribery might buy. Now, that bright mind was left to languish, fed by nothing more than a single new book each fortnight. That's a video game. By now, Cassidy was in the habit of reading very slowly indeed. She shut her latest tome and placed it upon the table, next to her half-written letter for her brother. Ugh, the king! Who exiled her! I never sound quite myself in these letters. How do you write from a distance to one whom you once saw daily? And how do you write anything at all when your life has grown so dull? I feel it. She decided to pen a few more sentences on how moved she felt after reading the book and how profoundly distressed she was by the ending of it. Family is important, but so too is recognizing the value of what you have before it is too late. Like you, if only the king had realized what a wonderful daughter he had. And I hope that you realize how much you are loved by me, your one and only sister. Wow. She paused, overcome by sheer feeling, and decided to keep that final bit to herself. I was too desperate for comfort, and princesses did not whinge, so... Man, I'm adore it all. How unbecoming. With a sigh, Cassidy stared at the crackling fire. She had more than enough firewood now to last until her next shipment of it. The sigh reminded her of El Elowen. Oh, the sight. Whoops. I wonder what Elowen is doing at this very moment. Let's go visit her in the woods, where she will murder me. Who's probably a witch as well. She could not fathom the day-to-day -day life of such a mysterious pers personage was utterly beyond her imagination. Her curiosity is so engaged, it was now impossible to ignore. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can press enter. Great. We just sit back. Relax. And so, the fair Cassidy resolved herself to take a walk and casually seek the other woman out. The only other female here. So, well, I'm pretty sure she's lesbian. That's why she's been exiled. That's my hypothesis. Perhaps I'll even stumble across, across where she lives today. Wouldn't it be exciting to surprise her at her home? You've just met her a day prior. You've just known her for a day, and now you want to know where she lives? Isn't that kind of... You seem like a young princess who knows no shit. You seem very gullible. You seem very stupid. You seem you have no wisdom, okay? If somebody doesn't trust you, they're not going to tell you where they live. You know what I mean? Thinking nothing at all of how inconvenient, how overly forward and pertinent it might be, she departed immediately. Exactly. No brain. No brain. Once outside, Cassidy took in a deep lungful of crisp forest air. How lovely it is today. Hardly a cloud in the sky. It, there was no cloud yesterday, girl. She took measured steps into the forest, constantly scanning the area around her on the lookout for this elusive domicile. And hey, maybe she lives in a tree. Fucking knows. Might Emily live in a cottage like mine? She is so elegant, I cannot imagine her doing household housework. <coughs> then again, I could hardly imagine myself doing housework not so long ago. Oh, how times change a person. Why? Because you're a princess and you're all fine and shit and you can't do all that stuff. <laughs> I have servants to do that for me. Cassidy reached her beloved wisteria tree before long and eagerly drank in the sight of it. She ran up to the tree and encircled it with her arms as if meaning to embrace it. Hello, dear tree. You are looking as lovely as ever today, though a certain someone sits not beneath your bows this afternoon. She leaned in to one side and then another, looking around the tree and into the forest to see if she might spy a window or the blowing of a chimney smoke. Sadly, she could make out only more trees. I can't suppose that Elowen lives in a treehouse, does she? Certainly not. Shit. Oh! Startled, Cassidy jumped, her foot catching unhappily on one of the tree's roots, sending her flailing forward. Careful! Elowen's arms shot out at once, her vice-like grip snaring the once princess just in time. Elowen's touch was so cold, yet her movements decisive. Cassidy's heart raced. Was she truly worried for me? Eh, she's probably gonna cook you alive. It took Cassidy several moments to regain her composure. Elowen, too, looked a bit shaken. 
Thank goodness you arrived when you did. Though truth be told, if you hadn't startled me so, I would not have fallen. Eh, is that so? I shall endeavor to be less frightening in the future then. Oh dear, she may have mistaken my meaning. I was only trying to cover up my embarrassment. Perhaps Elowen was joking. That is not necessary. Uh, perhaps Elowen was joking. That is not necessary. I don't fucking know. On second thought, was that perhaps a joke? Hehe. <laughs> you look much better with a smile. As do you. Still, how curious it is for us to be meeting here again. She told her to meet her here tomorrow, as in today. Stupid girl. You come here often. I live nearby. What is curious about it? Exactly. Wise and beautiful woman who will devour this stupid child. I'm merely saying that it's ser serendipitous. It must be fate. Fate has nothing to do with it, I assure you. Hells yeah. Oh, but it's so much more romantic to think of it as fate. I can think of nothing less romantic than fate. Perhaps this is something not yet possible for you to understand. Yeah, man, don't speak as though you're much older and wiser than me. Hello, and laughed a little. How old are you, anyway? Exactly. She's way, she looks way older, way wiser, and way more beautiful than this stupid bitch. How old do you think? Cassidy stared at Elowen, gazing deeply into her eyes, as if she might find the other woman's secrets there. Older than I first thought, perhaps. A wise answer. <laughs> Elowen tipped her head slightly, the motion seeming to indicate a desire to walk on. Cassidy was only too happy to comply. Together, the two, the two women strolled. There's a bit of grammar arrows, but it's okay. Their time together was marked by companionable silence. Cassidy never before a quiet girl was desperate to fill it, but what conversation might pique Elowen's interest was unclear. She peered shyly at Elowen's face in profile, so striking and noble did it seem. She has the air of an aristocrat. What could someone like she be doing living in the forest? Then again, am I not in the same position? No. You just have boobs. That's about it. Perhaps it's something she finds difficult to speak of. An icy gust of wind whistled through the clearing causing Cassidy to shiver and rub her bare arms. Eh, they're not that fair. The sun will be setting soon, and it will grow colder. Perhaps you should... It was then that the question Cassidy had been rumin ruminating on over all afternoon burst forth. Would you like to come to my cottage? Wow! Is that wise? Whatever do you mean? How can you extend such an invitation to one such as me, whom you hardly know? You're entirely too trusting. Exactly! Exactly. This woman, you don't, you guys don't know each other. You just know you're, you guys, uh, you guys know each other just a fucking day prior. And you're inviting her to your house as in, I don't fucking know, games, I guess. I'm surprised at you. Two solitary women ought to stick together out in these wilds. Besides, who else am I to have, have I to invite? I am, that is, sometimes feel quite lonely out here, don't you? turned her head slightly and gazed into the forest behind them, as if peering at something only she could see. Only this, then. I see. Very well, I would take you up on your offer. Though puzzled by Elowen's hesitation, Cassidy was overjoyed by her invitation, had been accepted. There was a spring in her step as she led the other woman to her home. <sighs> I have so many... Oh my god. This fucking stupid girl. It was only in front of her cottage that Cassidy suddenly understood what an impetuous thing it was that she was doing. Exactly! Is the house clean enough? She could not seem to recall when she had last swept or aired out her bedding. Is this where you live? Yes. It's charming. Thank you. I wish I could take more credit for that. The house was here long before I arrived. Even the furniture is not truly my own. Still, it suits you. Thank you. Dumbass girl. Bolstered by Elowen's reaction, Cassidy finally gained the courage to follow through. She opened the door wide, gesturing the other woman to enter. All she knows is her name is Elowen, and that's it. She looks like a witch goddess, goddess witch. I don't fucking know. It's quite spacious. You live here alone? That's right. Now she's gonna come in the night, she's gonna fucking haunt you. And scare the fuck out of you! It's not so bad. I don't have anyone to tell me what to do or where to go. I have a freedom now that I'd never known before. Perhaps, but sometimes I believe that being tied down to something is easier. If you don't realize you're being strangled, it's just a pleasant, lightheaded feeling. I don't really understand. 
What a dumbass girl. God damn. It's all right if you don't. Eloan walks slowly from one part of the room to the next. Her fingerprints go her fingertips ghosting over every surface. She looked to be seeking the essence of each object, taking in every minute flaw and deciphering its true nature. Cassidy wondered what Eloan might discover about her if only she allowed it. If only she dared. It was unbearably quiet unbear unbearably quiet. God damn. Just then Eloan came across the book Cassidy had finished reading. Oh, that's my that's a book my brother sent to me. I get so frightfully bored here that these books have become my sanctuary. I'm expecting a new shipment soon. Your brother? Was silent for a time, digesting that new information. Did she just bite her lip? Did she just bite her lip? I didn't see it. And then her eyes fell on the half-finished letter, haphazardly placed next to the book. Followed her gaze, her eye eyes wide, she leapt forward to snatch the letter away. How much had the other woman seen? She colored in... She colored mortification. Ah, your brother is far away from here. Yes. Is it beautiful, the place where you once both lived? I have not once seen its equal. More beautiful than this cottage prison of yours? She could not hide her surprise at Eloan's poisonous choice of words, nor could she hide her sudden tears. It's not like that. I don't fucking know. Excuse me? No, it's not like that. What is it? She dried her eyes delicately, but with determination. Now is not the time for tears. Things are complicated. It is not as clear-cut as you seem to believe. Undoubtedly, the affairs of men oft are. Yeah, man. However, all that I need to know is that he is there and you are here. That he is responsible for that difference can be inferred quite easily. You are a fast reader to be able to jump to such conclusions so, conclusions so swiftly. God damn. I am not unhappy here, Eloan. Can you say that truly? With an unclouded heart? Eloan peered into Cassidy's eyes, and their gazes held like two magnets, pulling each other in closer and closer still. Yet Cassidy could not do it. She could not look Eloan in the eye and tell an untruth. Eloan looked to the window. It has gotten dark. Oh my, how rude of me. I have not offered you tea or any refreshment. Do not trouble yourself on my account. I must away. I did not mean to impose for so long. I mean, you were just there for like, what? Five minutes? are hardly an imposition. You are kind and good. I should eat you alive. Cassidy's face lit up. Kind and good. Kind and good things do not survive long in a world such as ours. And just as quickly as it had come, the sudden rush of the light left her. Bowing her head, the other woman was out the door and gone, leaving hurt and confusion in her wake. She's just telling the truth. I mean, I like people who say the truth front and forward. When she looked out the window to glimpse the same view that Eloan had just beheld, what Cassidy saw before her was but a bleak uncertainty. Without wisdom or experience, storms shall ill weathered be. But when you are nearby, dear one, no storms can bother me. Well, guys, I'm going to end this one here. I'm going to stop. I will continue in the next video. Uh, this seems a little bit interesting, but not much. Two different personalities here for damn sure. And I feel like our character, uh, forgot her name. I don't fucking remember. I feel like our character is gonna die. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying this experience with me. It's a little different from the videos I post. I usually post scary games, but hey, whatevs. Uh, I will have a link in the description for this game. I don't think I said it in the last video, but I will put a link in the description so you guys can play this game yourselves. I appreciate so much the support. Share it if you like it. Like it if you like it. And I will see you guys in my next video. Mwah. Love you all.